Hello, so I've been working on some of the details for this mech model and I figured I would just go ahead and keep working on it and maybe I'll upload one of the videos where I do these details uh, as a daily video because there aren't actually very many um, there, there, it's very rare to actually have uh, a tutorial that shows you how to do detail work or at least how I do detail work normally you will find that uh, tutorials kind of take you through the basic box modeling and then leave you on your own to try and figure out the detail work um, which I don't really want to do. I'll go ahead and show you how I do a detail work um, which is just a combination of loop cuts and extruding. Now I actually did this hip in a more complicated way but I'm not sure that I'm going to upload that video because it's um, long. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is I'm creating the outcroppings that you can see on the chest in this sketch like that and then there's another one down here so I extrude and shrink just like the first first one and then extrude again and that ended up being too tall so let's take these um, pull this forward and pull these Oh. Now, a common mistake that uh, modelers make when they first start out, including me, I'm not exactly experienced, is they put too much focus on the mesh rather than on the uh, material. In the end, the material will end up playing a big role in how your uh, object actually looks, especially if you're going to be using bump mapped materials like we are. So uh, don't feel that you have to detail every single thing, but uh, you do want to get the major points. So we have a lot of uh, uh, stuff left to do, but the question is what do we want to tackle next? And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to reshape the chest so that it has this uh, kind of skull-like shape to it. And that's a matter of taking these and pulling them out, and then taking these and pushing them in. And now you can see that we've got that same skull-like shape. But it's not perfect, and one of the reasons it's not perfect is simply because of our incredibly low uh, density polygons. So um, if we wanted to try and make it more perfect, we could add another, another loop cut. And then we could take this in here. We need to have more density in this part of the mesh, but I'm not sure that I want a loop cut there. Because it cuts across a lot of weird cuts across a lot of weird stuff as you can see. So what we actually want to do is we don't want a loop cut. Um, we want to just have a, a cut that isn't a loop. Uh, and there's a couple of ways to do that. Um, but in general you can use a knife for this. So I'm gonna take it uh, here to here to here, to here, to here, to here, and then forward. There you go. Probably should have gone back instead of forward, but that's okay. And then hit space and it happens. And there you go. Now this has the effect of creating some triangles, and in most most people will tell you to avoid triangles if you can. They're not, not the best. Uh, they don't deform very well. Um, I don't think that's so much of an issue for this particular region as the torso of the mech is not going to be deforming very much, uh, if at all. Alright, so now you can see that we've got something a lot closer to what we had. Uh, it's not precisely the same, and one of the reasons is because we actually need some more detail here if we want to make it precisely the same. So we did this cut here, and uh, it's not actually going to be a cut that we want to do. Instead we want to do a cut up through this. Um, come on, cut, cut, cut. Cut, and where do we want to end it? Let's go back. Cut. Alright, and now we can connect these. So we still have a triangle there. Actually, we don't. Um, well, it's a question of whether we want to have a triangle there, because we do have enough points back here to make a rectangle, I mean a, a quad, and that means that we can make a quad out of these as well. Um, but that's not a very good 
we really want to have this line continue, so I am actually going to use triangles here, even though that's not ideal, because I want this to be a line that I can twist uh, without worrying about it too much. If it was, if there was a, a face here rather than a line, then I'd have to worry about whether or not we have concave or convex surface there. Um, so I'll take these, move them in, and then take these, move this one in and this one forward and in. And then, that's a little bit better. We're still a little bit wide here. Okay, so now we get to the arm, and the arm is always going to be a hard part uh, because the shoulder is one of the more complicated uh, joints. I would say it's the second most difficult joint to get right, uh, aside from the hips, which, which are basically two joints in one, which is why they're hard. But the shoulder is, uh, is complex because, especially in a mech, uh, there's deformations that happen, and we want them to look correct rather than crappy. So we can create a loop cut here. And as you can see, because we've got a triangle, it stops down there, and all it does is cut across the bottom of the chin. So that's fine. I'm okay. We'll need some a little bit of de density there anyway. Um, although, if I was being honest, I really want the loop cut to go around the arm. This one is a better loop cut to make. So why don't we take these points and pull them like so, and then we'll grab this underarm area. The back is okay as it is, I think. Yeah. Pull that in as well. And then we can make a loop cut here, and it's around the arm. So what do we want to do with this loop cut? Uh, well, we want to create a joint, uh, the appearance of a joint for this arm, which means that what we're actually going to do is we're going to delete this edge. And this gives us a gap, as you can see. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and circle this and extrude it in, bring it down, scale it X, open, uh, and then what we're going to do is we want to create the illusion of a pipe back there. And the way we're going to do that is we're actually just going to fill this in as a face, and we're going to rely on the material in the final go to give us uh, the illusion of having a pipe running through that region. Um, if we were going for a high quality mesh, well, we would want to put a pipe in there, but as you can see, my mesh is not not intended to be terribly high quality, and that's on purpose. Now, the other place that we're going to have hard, we're going to have difficulty is here in the elbow. So, if we look at the sketch, you can see that the elbow is quite complex, but the core of it is that it's got a lot of exposed machinery here. So, we want to do the same thing we just did, but this one we have to be a little bit more careful of. And one of the things we need to do is we need to bring these points in on the x-axis to give it a little bit of a uh, of a tapered look around the edge of the hole. There we go. And then we want to uh, bring this in again like this. Uh, come on. Yeah. And fill it in. While we aren't going to put any... Um, you know, we can go ahead and, and put in... I'll show you how to put in, in a, very, a very simple pipe through both of these then. Uh, we, if you remember how we did the knee, uh, just below the knee, we used a trick where we cut using the knife like this. And did that again on the other side. And then what we did is we moved the original points down like this. Scale X. And the result is that we've got this uh, triangle here. So let's delete this primary face. We don't need this this face. It's uh, it's not in the right spot. And let's go ahead and build ourselves some new faces. Like we need to connect these into a face, and we want to connect these into a face. And that leaves us with this edge that we don't need, and this edge that we don't need. And what we do is we connect these two. Come on and these two. And that'll give us a very simple pipe-like look. But we want to have a little bit more of a... Uh, uh, we want to have this be... It, it feel like it bulges. 
Um, well, it turns out that we have two loop cuts that we're not currently using, one loop cut and now another, that we aren't currently using. So let's go ahead and integrate those. And the way we integrate those is, let's drag these out so that they're roughly in the right spot. Come on, there is a line there, I can see it. And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to use the knife and cut from one across each of these lines and turn to the other. Oh, it didn't take. Undo. Let's go ahead and go into vertex mode so I can see the vertexes. Vertices a little clearer. Come on. No, that's not a line. Connect. 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 And connect. There we are. You could also delete those faces and then re-add them in a more careful manner if you felt like it. Oh, in both cases, the, the upper face didn't take it, so let's go ahead and delete that upper face. And you can see that there are no lines there, so we're going to have to just manually build that face. Just like I was saying, this is how you would do it manually if you didn't want to use the knife. Alright, so now all we need to do is take these and scale them. Mm. We can take this, pull it forward, and put these further back. Now, this doesn't have enough topology to really get a, a strong, um, a strong bulge. We don't have the we don't have the the bulge that we've got down here where it's complicated and has. Uh, some really tight topology. We don't have anything sharp enough like that, but that's okay. We don't really need the high definition. So let's go ahead and do the same thing we just did, but down here. We're going to need two loop cuts, and we're going to need to add in a knife cut here and here, and another knife cut here to here. And then we we'll go back to line edit and delete these two lines, edges, sorry. And now we fill in the faces. So this guy, huh. it's actually not quite as easy as I made it seem. So we're extruding these just so that we have some purchase for our face filling. Oh, and that's actually not, not quite enough extrusion, so that's fine though. Now it's okay. It's okay, it'll work out. Come on. Nope. I did that wrong the first time, too. There we go. So this is sort of the invert. Um, and you can see that there uh, is at least one error. This face here is, I screwed it up somehow. Um, oh, no, no, just the faces, there we go. Uh, and I'm not sure how I screwed that one up, but we'll go ahead and fill it back in. Oh, it looks like it's, let's go ahead and pull this out, because that's probably the source of much of our problems. All right, now let's go ahead and fill it in. I think it was getting twisted for some reason, yeah. So. That's how you can build some details into your mech um, if you want to. Uh, there are a lot of other ways to do this, and one of the better ways is to add in mesh components and then link them in manually, um, uh, which is what I did with the hip. Uh, I put in a circle mesh and then I manually welded it into place face by face. All right, so now we've got a little bit of topology to our mesh, but you can see that the arm still looks very unrefined in comparison to the sketch of the arm, which has all sorts of detail work. Most of that detail work is going to be done by our actual material, but there is some more that we need to put in. One of the things we want to put in is we want to put in this slope here. Um, now we have the basic idea of this slope, but we don't have, actually have the slope strongly integrated. 
So we're actually going to go ahead and uh, just adjust things until it looks like the slope that we want, like this. And um, let's go ahead and take these guys and bring them back and then bring them down. So that'll create a little bit of a cut. And then we can do the same thing down here. Now what do we do for the back though? Um, these arms aren't terribly important to me because the, the character playing the game won't usually see very much of the arms. They're going to be mostly uh, uh, seeing the arms from this kind of angle here. Uh, as they reach forward to, and the backpack is going to obscure it, and the shoulder is going to obscure it, but they will see the upper side of the elbow, the upper rear elbow. So we're going to add a little bit of of mesh to this, since it's going to be seen so commonly and regularly, um, and that's just going to be a little bit. We don't need too much, but these guys can come up here to give it a little bit of punch to it. Let's go ahead and actually, yeah, something like that. And then we can take this and move it like that. And you can see that there's a little bit of an interesting shape to the elbow now. It'll look more interesting when there's actual shading, um, but that's okay. The other thing that we've got for the arm is this forearm, which has the opposite of what we just did, and then expands into this gauntlet. Um, so right now these are much too shallow, so let's go ahead and grab these and move them like this. And then we'll grab the top and there, move them like this. These guys... Oh, it looks like there's an extra loop in there. I didn't... No, wait, that's, that's not actually a loop. It's just distorted. That's fine. And then we can take these, move them over here, and since we now have lots and lots of space on this pipe, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, face extrude these. And that'll give us the, the nice bulge that we might need. You could do that on that one as well, but it's a much smaller joint, so it's probably not worth it. The other thing we could do is we could extrude these in, like this, which will give us a much greater feeling of depth uh, it's not quite as impressive as I'd like, so let's go ahead and really take it back. There we go. Yeah, there we are. Now it's starting to look a little bit like a robot. So if we look at the arm design, you can see that one of the things I did is... Oh, I didn't... That goes a lot further than I thought it did. It's really easy to... This is why you use references. Uh, it's really easy to lose track of how far you think you've gone versus how far you think you should go. When you're working in close like this, your scale gets all screwed up. Uh, it's really easy to just presume that your instincts when you're modeling are better, but that's almost always the wrong choice. Uh, your instincts when you drew the original mech, or the original drawing, are usually better. Um, the actual... Uh, uh, I guess I'm not going to do that part, though. The actual design, as you're here inside the mech, you can lose track of what's going on and your scale gets screwed up, your sense of scale gets screwed up. So it's generally better to follow, if you have the option of either following what you've done here in the, in the program or going and following the arm mesh that you've drawn, uh, draw, follow the drawing. Don't, don't, don't make the mistake of assuming that you're doing things well here in the uh, modeling system because you'll, you'll lose track of, where, of what the scale is. Extrude, scale up, and move out. Scale up, scale, literally scale up, there. Alright, so let's go ahead and bring these in, and they'll be the, uh, the expanded area on our arm. Um, yeah, this actually isn't quite straight, is it? Well, whatever. 
Now we've got a lot of options for exactly how we want to do this, and we can give it as much or as little detail as we would like. Uh, the forearms are something the player is going to see fairly regularly, but not quite as regularly as you might think, uh, simply because there's not a whole lot of call for a character to look at what he's holding. Uh, he'll normally only see the arms when he's trying to place something down. Uh, so uh, I think it's a high priority, so I'm going to spend some... It's not as high priority as the back of the foot, which the player will be looking at all the time. Uh, and I ended up screwing this up. Oh, that's stupid of me. So now let me show you how to undo something. Just delete things. You don't have to worry too much about it. If you make a mistake, just rebuild it. If you don't understand how to rebuild what you created, then you didn't create it. Um, you just lucked into it. So it's better to uh, have a deep understanding of how things work. And here we are. These are the faces we actually want to extrude. There we go. I was wondering why it was so much more distorted. All right. Pull this in. And believe it or not, the character, the player is going to see the back of the character's forearms much more than he's going to see the front of the character's forearms. So this part of the topology is really going to matter. And that's why I'm going to go ahead and add some details right here with more extrusion, like so. And it's just kind of an arbitrary detail. Um, it's not quite severe enough for my liking, though, so I'm going to go and modify it. give it a little bit more depth. Um, yeah, something more like that, I think. But in turn, it makes this elbow look kind of wishy-washy, so let's go ahead and make the elbow look less wishy-washy. There we go. So now you can see we've got some, uh, some bulk to our arm, but these arm bracers don't look quite right now, do they? So let's go ahead and keep adjusting these until they are more or less correct. And the biggest part of that is going to be bringing this outrageous um, over gap, this overhang back into... There we go. But another part of it is going to be to reduce the area that doesn't have these by dragging this forward. And this is actually important because it reduces this twisted area. You see how we've got this twist here? Um, twisted areas are generally a very poor idea because the mesh uh, UV mapping generally screws up if you're not careful. So we'll use this opportunity to kind of minimize those twisted areas as well as uh, working to actually um, reduce the amount of twistedness they are. And then we're going to do the same back here. Now, we're going to see the top of the forearm a lot more than we're going to see the bottom of the forearm. So let's go ahead and add in some arbitrary details. And you can see that the details we've got here is this kind of vectored V shape. So let's go ahead and add that in, which we do by extruding this. And then we need to cut. So let's go ahead and add some cuts. Uh, we actually need to do something that is um, uh, probably generally frowned on, and that is I'm going to make a 5 gone. Um, I'm not too worried about it, uh, because this is another part that's not actually going to animate much. But if you are the sort who gets huffy about that sort of thing, then you feel free to not do it the way I'm doing it. There you go. And you can see by five gone, I mean that there's five faces here. Uh, the other option is, of course, that I could add one more cut from here to here and make it a triangle, which is generally, I think, more acceptable in old school terms, but in I, I don't think it's actually more acceptable if you take a look at modern um, modern pipelines. I think that I think that uh, five guns are generally not that bad. What do you call them? Uh, I've forgotten the word for five. Just adjust, adjust, adjust. That'll do. That looks fine. 
course, now we have the biggie, the hand. So this is where I'm going to stop, and maybe this will be the episode I uploaded, because I actually did some interesting stuff, and if you have any interest in modeling but are very new to it, some of this stuff might be useful to you, and if you're experienced, then maybe you can get a good laugh out of my uh, newbie mistakes.